Good morning. Welcome to our Science 8 ODL class with me, Teacher Zeno. Here are the most essential learning competency. First, we are going to determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in a particular atom. We are going to compare the masses of the subatomic particles using different ways of visual presentation. And second, we are going to infer which subatomic particle contributes to the mass of the atom. So what are atoms and what do they do? Atoms are the smallest particle of matter. Atoms make up everything around us. Molecules are known as the combinations of atoms, while elements are only one type of atom. Compounds are made up of different types of atoms. This time, let us discover the history of atoms. The first one is Democritus. According to him, all matter if divided into its smallest possible parts, that part would be known as atomus or indivisible. We also have John Dalton in the 1800s. Dalton built on Democritus the theory of atoms expanded theory to include concept of elements, compounds, and atoms. And he formed what was known as the billiard ball model of the atom. So this is the solid sphere model or billiard ball model, which was proposed by John Dalton. Next, we have the plum padding model or the raisin bun model, which was proposed by J.J. Thompson. The blue circles represent the negative electron plums, while the orange represents the positive padding. I know you are familiar already of the raisin bread. So just imagine the raisins represent the negative electron plums, while the bread itself is the positive. So that is how J.J. Thompson sees the model of the atom. This is our planetary model or the nuclear model, which was proposed by Ernest Rutherford. And the last one, we have Bohr model or orbit model that was proposed by Niels Bohr. Atoms are the basic building blocks of matter that make up everyday object. It is the smallest component of an element having the chemical properties of the element. There are over 100 different kinds of atoms. By combining these atoms in different ways, we can make anything in the universe. The particles smaller than atom are called subatomic particles. So here are the components of an atom. So what makes up an atom? At the center of all atoms is the nucleus. The nucleus contains protons, and neutrons. Protons are positively charged atomic particles. Those are the red circles. Neutrons, the blue circles, are uncharged or neutral atomic particles. The particles present in nucleus are called nucleons, protons, and neutrons are nucleons. Orbiting around the nucleus are the electrons. Electrons are negatively charged atomic particles. Nature prefers balance, so if a particle is positively charged, it will attract to unnegatively charged particles and vice versa. So let us just have a recap. Where would you find the following parts of an atom and what is its charge? Protons can be found in the center of the atom. So those are the red circles. Neutrons are also found in the center of the atom, which are the blue circles. And the electrons, which are the green circles, are orbiting the atom. So this time, we are now going to perform your learning activity sheet number five. Activity number one, tabular presentation. 
the properties of the three subatomic particles are summarized in the table below. Study the different masses of the three subatomic particles. Here are some properties of the three subatomic particles. Let's start with the electron. The charges are negative one mass in grams. We have 9.109 .9 times 10 to the negative 28. It is located outside the nucleus. Next, we have the proton. The charge is positive one. Mass is 1.672 times 10 to the negative 24. And the location is in the nucleus. And lastly, we have Neutron, the charge is zero. Mass is 1.675 times 10 to the negative 24, and it is located also inside the nucleus. For activity two, we have this graphical presentation. The bar graph here shows the comparison of the masses of the three subatomic particles. Study the graph and determine the difference of the three subatomic particles in terms of mass. We have the first one, which is the proton. The mass is 16,720 in grams, which is times 10 to the negative 28. Then we also have neutron, which is 16,750 times 10 to the negative 28 grams. And lastly, we have the electron, which is 910.9. For activity three, seesaw representation. A seesaw can show a comparison between two masses of an object. A seesaw goes up and down depending on the mass it carries on each side. Compare the mass of the neutron and proton on each side of the seesaw. We have here the neutron, while we have here the proton. So which do you think is heavier? Is it the neutron or the proton? Why do you think neutron is on the lower side of the seesaw? After you are going to answer the questions on analysis, refer to the different visual presentation in the learning activity to answer the following questions. For activity one and two, tabular and graphical presentation, question number one, which subatomic particle is the lightest? Question number two, where is the location in an atom of the lightest subatomic particle? Question number three, which subatomic particle is the heaviest? Question number four, which subatomic particles have almost the same mass? And for question number five, where is the location in an atom of the subatomic particles with almost the same mass? For the activity on the seesaw, we have Question number six, how does the mass of the neutron compare to the mass of the proton? For letter C, obstruction, we have number one, what are the three subatomic particles of an atom? For number two, which subatomic particle or particles make or mix up most of the mass of the atom? For number three, which is the massive part of an atom? Why? And lastly, does the electron contribute to the mass of an atom? Why? For letter D, application, the illustration below represents an apple pie. Divide the pie to compare the masses of the three subatomic particles of an atom. Label the three parts, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Here's the rubric for scoring to guide you in doing your activity. The first criteria, we have the content. To get five points, you must be able to explain the idea very well. Second, we have completeness of answers. Five points if all the parts of the learning activity sheet are answered. And last but not the least, we have originality, which is five points also. All of the ideas are original, a total of 15 points. Enjoy doing your activity. Good luck, thank you, and God bless.